Let's start section 8.4. Um, we're going to learn about properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. Yes, there will be a spelling test. Rhombuses, there's an H in there. But what's cool is, buses is spelled the same way as that. So, rom with an H and then buses. <laughs> All right, what is a rhombus? A rhombus is a par parallelogram with four congruent sides. I always thought of a rhombus as a squished square. I don't know if I can spell squished. Okay, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. And a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. Now what's crazy is like a square is a square is a square. It's only itself. It, um, it's very uh, independent. A rectangle, I will never be able to do a video without being interrupted again. <laughs> So a rectangle, um, it's a parallelogram with four right angles. So a rectangle can also be a, um, a rectangle, let's see, a square can be, oh goodness. Let's just move to what's really cool. Let me show you this. All right, um, some corollaries. A quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides. Okay, ABCD is a rhombus if and only if all of those sides are congruent. Rectangle cord corollary. A, rectang a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. It doesn't say anything about the lengths of the sides. Um, we can see that these sides are congruent and these sides are congruent, but they could all be congruent. Okay? So a rectangle is a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles. That's all you need to know four right angles. Now a square has to have congruent sides and four right angles, okay? For your notebook, put it in. A Venn diagram, this is gonna help us um, do everything. So this Venn diagram, I can pick things out. So if I look at that square, a square is a rectangle, a rhombus, and a par parallelogram. So when I said it's independent, I guess um, that I said that backwards. A square can be everything. This Venn diagram, like I would put it on my note card and it would help my life become easier because it just, it organizes everything. Like a rectangle can only be a rectangle and a parallelogram because it's in this circle, but it's also in this box. A square is part of this circle, this circle, and the box. A rhombus, um, a rhombus is a rhombus and a parallelogram. A rhombus cannot be a rectangle, it cannot be a square. Okay, a rhombus is just part of this circle and the box. So this Venn diagram is awesome. Yes, awesome. Moving back. Let's see, where did I leave off? We already talked about this one. All right, let's do an example. For any rhombus, Q, R, S, T, decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. Draw a sketch and explain your reasoning. Let's draw a rhombus. Remember, a rhombus is a squished square. Square has four congruent sides. One, two, three, four. And let's label it. Q, R, S, T. Now it's saying that angle Q is congruent to angle S, Q and S. Um, so for any rhombus, Q or ST, decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. By definition, a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So if you look back a few sections, theorem 8.4 um, says that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So this statement is always true because they are opposite angles and they are always congruent. Another one. For any rhombus, QRST, decide whether the statement is always or sometimes true. Draw a sketch and explain your reasoning. Let me sketch that again. Squished square. QRST. It's a rhombus, so all the sides are equal. Um, a rhombus is a parallelogram. Let's see, Q and R. Q and R. 
Um, if a rhombus QRST is a square, then all four angles are congruent. So this rhombus would not be correct for that explanation or for that um, problem. I would have to draw this, which is also a rhombus. Remember that Venn diagram? So this one would be sometimes true. Um, if the rhombus is a square, then all four angles are congruent angles. So if QRST is a square, um, then it's true. But because not all rhombuses are squares, the statement is sometimes true. Classify the special quadrilateral. Explain your reasoning. Okay, let's look at this one. The quadrilateral, let's look and make a list. I have four congruent sides and um, an angle of 70, my goodness, my writing is terrible, of 70 degrees. So I have four congruent sides and one angle is 70 degrees. So we are not a square because the angles would have to be 90. So by the rhombus corollary, corollary is a hard word to spell, corollary, um, this quadrilateral is a rhombus, and that's all it can be. You try. For any rectangle, EFGH, is it always or sometimes true that FG is congruent to GH? Explain your reasoning. I would draw a sketch. Push pause. All right, this statement would only be true if rectangle EFGH is a square. If you see the first drawing I drew, I tried to mark FG is congruent to GH, and yeah, that does not make sense. So only if it's a square. So I drew another one that actually doesn't look very good either, but um, we would say that this is a square. So sometimes true. On whether you try, a quadrilateral has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. Sketch the quadrilateral and classify it. I'm going to push pause. I drew the description, quadrilateral, four congruent sides, four congruent angles. The only thing it could be is a square. All right, three theorems. <clears throat> We're talking about diagonals. This is really important to understand because we'll need it for the next two sections, um, the end of the chapter. So the theorems below describe some properties of the diagonals of rhombuses and rectangles. Theorem 811, a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. Um, so parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus if and only if segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD. Theorem 812, a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. We haven't bisected angles yet. Um, interruption, where was I? <laughs> uh, I think theorem 812. So a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. Um, and yeah, this is where the first time we've talked about angle bisectors. Remember, an angle bisector cuts an angle into two equal pieces. So the diagonals bisect the pair of opposite angles. So this diagonal right here bisected angle A into two equal angles. Bisected angle C into two equal angles. Same with this diagonal here, bisected D and B. Um, theorem 813. A parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. All of them are congruent. So a rectangle, the diagonals bisect each other, but each bisected diagonal is congruent. Pretty cool. All right, sketching triangle ABCD, um, and then listing everything you know. Let's draw one first. And what do we know about triangles ABCD? Um, 
let's see, opposite sides, are congruent. Let's mark that. What else do we know? All angles are 90 degrees. Let's mark that. And because, this is the crazy part, because um, rectangles are also parallelograms. We also know other things like opposite. Actually, let's erase that. My mistake. Oops, that's not erase. Yeah, opposite sides are parallel. Which we can mark that. It's getting a little messy. Um, opposite angles are congruent, which is sort of a duh. Because they're already, you know, sort of marked. Because they're all 90. And if I drew some diagonals, we would see that they bisect each other. That's about all I know about a rectangle. All right, do the same thing with a square and push pause. All right, the you try. So um, a square, wow, it's a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent. It's a rectangle. It's a rhombus. Opposite sides are parallel. All sides are congruent. Diagonals are perpendicular. Diagonals are congruent. Diagonals bisect each other. Um, lots of information about square, because if you remember in the Venn diagram, a square is like everything. It's a parallelogram, it's a rectangle, it's a rhombus, it's everything. So that was a long list. Biconditional statements. Um, a long time ago we learned about biconditional statements. It's those if and only if statements. So I just want to talk really quick about a conditional statement. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, then the paral parallelogram is a rhombus. Um, you're going to need that kind of statement to classify things in this lesson. Also a converse. If a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its, then its diagonals are perpendicular, you know, the flip of the conditional. So just remember, you can use those conditional statements and converses to classify shapes throughout the lesson. Example four. You're building a frame for a window. The window will be installed in the opening shown in the diagram. The opening must be a rectangle. Given the measurements in this diagram, can you assume it's a triangle? Or can you assume it's a rectangle? We're not doing triangles anymore, remember. Um, if I look at the diagram, I've got opposite sides are congruent. Um, but honestly, we don't know anything about the angles. Um, so I don't think you can, because a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent. And if you put a parallelogram where the angles aren't 90 degrees as a window, uh, your window maker is going to be pretty upset. So no, you can't, um, just because of the angles. Part B, you measure the diagonals of the opening, and the diagonals are 54.8 and 55.3. What can you conclude about the shape of a shape of the opening. If I look at um, theorem 813, the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. Um, and these diagonals are not congruent. So we still don't have a rectangle. Uh, rebuild it. You can't put a window in there. Let's try you try. Um, on your own, suppose you measure only the diagonals of a window opening. If the diagonals have the same measure, can you conclude that the opening is a rectangle? Um, push pause and try on your own. That one was pretty simple. Um, theorem 18, 813 states, a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So if its, di if its diagonals are congruent, then it's a, poly a parallelogram. Sorry, tongue twisters. Daily homework quiz. There are three slides, so questions one and two. 
Question three. Question four. Awesome.